And, and I'm showing you these pictures not because I think that these are such ast astounding pictures. I think this is where the voodoo and confusion comes in because people show some amazing pictures. These are not my pictures. Um, where you're going to see some significant changes after two weeks and people say, okay, something else has got to be going on. I don't trust these pictures. You know, people are, are pulling in their abdomens, they're doing exercise, they're dieting. You know, something is not right because this just doesn't really make sense to me. It's, it's a lot of voodoo. And I had some discussions with the company because indeed I had an experience with many aspects of low level light in the past. I used a device called Gentle Waves and Gentle Waves is a very short pulsed yellow low level light device that had really wonderful effects on many aspects of healing and that too was a trigger device. So I had some sense that low level energy did something. The problem I had is that we really needed to do something um, that was bulletproof and I, and I spoke to the company and I said look let's do something that can't be questioned because when you're measuring the abdomen people are going to say you pulled in your stomach, you, you did something to change your weight, etc. So a double blind randomized uh, uh, sham control study was, was, under, was started um, on the circumference reduction in the upper arms because the idea here is that no matter what you do to your upper arms, it is very hard to reduce the circumference, especially in a short period of time. And you're not going to diet this. It's, no matter what you do, it's, it's not something you can suck in your arms. There, there are very little, if any, confounding variables. Let's put it that way. So the idea and rationale was that there are some proven mechanisms. There are multiple clinical trials. The doubts remain. How could it possibly be effective? How could we deal with these confounding variables? And I think that this is a really nice aspect because diet doesn't affect it. And these are measured blindly by uh, a separate person with a zip um, device that I'll show you, uh, which takes away all uh, the uh, subjective control. 40 patients, 20 treatment, 20 sham, double blind, randomized sham control study, no diet changes, no supplement, six treatments, measurements at baseline, one, two, and four weeks. The inclusion was male and female. It was about 19 female, one male for this. BMI, 20 to 35. No other treatment, they had to be willing to abstain from any other treatment, any other study procedure, keep their, um, maintain their regular diet and exercise regimen without changing a thing. Lots of exclusions, anybody who had anything, uh, both uh, medically or by any other uh, method that would confound this, we just you know, kept them out of the study, basically. This is the tape measurement. It's a, a pressure sensitive, it kind of zip tights in, in specific ways. So the measurement was really very objective and not subjective. We did a midpoint evaluation at one week, study success endpoints at two weeks, post procedural evaluation. And we looked at arm circumference in the midpoint, BMI, um, success criteria, which was greater than a 1.5 centimeter reduction in each arm. Uh, subjective uh, criteria and post-procedure BMI and circumference. Okay, results. First of all, here are the two um, test groups. Um, statistically, there was no difference in age, uh, ethnicity. It was a mixed eth ethnicity, and the body mass index was essentially the same for both groups. This was very interesting. This is the primary outcome. Remember, it's patients um, at the end point of 1.5, that's a uh, typo, 1.5 centimeters or greater for each of the right or left arm. And to be successful, it had to be 35% greater, but indeed, 60% of the patients in the treatment group, zero in the placebo group, met this criteria. And that's highly statistically significant. What's more interesting is this graph. This shows the change at each time for both arms. So in the sham group, what you see is there was virtually no change, but what you see consistently is down to week two, about a four centimeter change, overall mean change in the test group. This was highly significant, and it stayed in the two-week post-treatment uh, phase. So again, sham, no change. You could see the big change in the test group. Satisfaction mimicked what we saw in the other. Um, very satisfied here. This is the satisfied test group. 80% in the test group versus 35 in the non-test group. There was no dissatisfied uh, in the uh, test group uh, and 20% in the um, placebo group. So patients 
seem to know something happened in the test group, even though they would have no idea uh, which treatment they got. Um, this is the, uh, okay, wait, well, come on. There we go. The extent of change, what you're going to see here is that um, in the test group, uh, you have 85% who felt they were improved versus only, uh, I think it's 35%, uh, and no change, only 10% um, in the uh, test group and 65% uh, in the placebo group. So again, patients noted this. Expectations here, same, better than expected, uh, much higher in the test group, uh, worse than expected, uh, almost exclusively in the placebo group. So the conclusions of this trial was that non-invasive, low-level laser therapy, the Zorona therapy, was significantly more effective at reduce, <coughs> reduction of arm circumference than sham treatments at every time point. The subjective assessment was significantly positive for treatment groups. There was no pain and no AEs. So what do we su can summarize and conclude about this? I think that what we know is that low-level light has an effect on the system. It's not voodoo, it's not magic, it is science. Um, from the standpoint of fat, it causes changes in energy utilization, leakage, and breakdown of the fat in the extracellular space. These painless low-level light treatments cause reduction in weight and total circumference, uh, at least changes in cholesterol and leptin. Some of the studies I heard about this weekend were really interesting because when you start doing multiple treatments on women who were postmenopausal, they started having their periods again. So there's something very profound in terms of systemic changes that are occurring from this type of treatment, hopefully to look at to rebalance the system. Um, the ARM study showed significant results and there were no confounding variables. Nobody could say, Diet affected this, exercise affected this, you know, somebody must have been measuring wrong. And finally, there's a lot of continued study on new indications. There's some very, very interesting data on painless treatment of onychomycosis, certainly wound healing, and we've done some results and some work on uh, pain syndrome such as post neuralgia. So I think the future is bright, so to speak, for a low-level laser therapy. I thank you for your attention, and if we can have any questions, that would be yeah. great. Thank you.